Hello guys, uh, today we'll be talking about why do some aircraft or spacecrafts have a rounded nose rather than a pointed tip, okay? So this goes uh, at the time of the World War II. At that time, basically the supersonic flights uh, were the dominant feature of the aerodynamics. And the major conception was, or you can say the misconception was, the more the slender, the pointed the body, the better it will be in terms of the drag attraction. So, idea was if your body is having uh, more pointed, it's a cylinder body, then the shock wave attached to it will be weak. And given that circumstances, the drag force will also be less. Uh, just at the time of World War II, they made the German V2 rocket. It was following the same idea. Now, the need came for the first time when the US bombed uh, the first hydrogen bomb in 1953. So at that time, uh, it, it spurred the idea of development of the intercontinental ballistic missile. And uh, the main feature of this missile is basically it has to travel at long distances at a velocity of around 6,700 meters per second, that's around Mach 23. Now, the high velocity is the issue because as soon as the velocity will become high, the aerodynamic heating will become severe. And this was a very big problem at that time. So the very first thinking at that time was you have to make the body uh, like sharp and pointed and like a cylinder body. If you do that, it will help you. But definitely there were a lot of efforts in this direction to make sure that there is a laminar flow over the vehicle surface. But as we all are aware that there is like nature does not appreciate the laminar flow. Nature loves turbulence. As a result, as soon as the re-entry vehicle comes into the atmosphere, it started burning before even reaching to the earth's surface. So the idea for the first time came from 1951 by H. Julian Allen, who was at that time working for NACA, that is National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. He introduced the concept of the blunt re-entry body. I think you have to understand this point very clearly, uh, what I'll be explaining next. So uh, to explain that, we just assume that there is an earth here and you have a re-entry vehicle, which is like right now a black here. And this earth, uh, this entry vehicle is going to come to the earth's surface. Okay. So the first idea was basically uh, at the time of the re-entry, the velocity uh, basically the, and the height in terms of kinetic energy and potential energy is very high. So you have a high kinetic energy plus high potential energy at particular height. But as soon as the, it reaches the earth, the velocity becomes very small and height also becomes very less compared to what it was initially. So uh, all the in terms of kinetic energy and potential energy, that is also becomes very low. So question comes basically, where has all the energy gone? Uh, because since it was high at the top and low at the bottom, energy must have been dissipated somewhere. So the first answer was the energy is being utilized to heat the body and the energy was used to heat the air flow around the body. Now, this was the two key, these were the two key concepts over which the idea of blunt body came in the picture. So the explanation came in such a way that basically if you have, if you see in this figure, if you have a shock uh, of on a, on a conical and pointed body, the shock is attached to the body and basically uh, it is heating. It is heating the body. There are two heatings happening here. First of all, the shock wave is causing the heating of the air and there are frictional dissipation because of which the body is getting heated. So the idea was basically you have to dump more energy into the air so that less energy is available for the body. That is the idea. So what you have to do is you have to create some stronger shock wave. And how do you do that? You have to use a blunt body. Stronger shock wave is also called a bow shock. Basically, if you talk about a blunt body, uh, you the, the blunt body bow shock is not attached to the body. And that is the biggest benefit of using a blunt body on these space stuffs. So basically, uh, to minimize the aerodynamics heating, you actually have to use a blunt body rather than the cylinder body. And that is a key concept. That is why some spacecraft, especially spacecrafts are used uh, to have are currently also used to have basically a blunt nose rather than a sharp pointed nose. 
uh, there are a few extra things I just want to mention. Uh, this this idea was so critical that it was a document, in a secret document for the government for around four years. And in after four years, in 1955, Allen received a award, Albert Reed Award, for his contribution. And uh, in 1958 only, his work was made available from for the public use. And all, this concept of the blunt body was also used in the Atlas ICBM and the Polo Lunar Capsule. After that, Allen became the director of the NASA Ames Center in 1965 and he retired in 1970. So yeah, that was all about why do we have to use blunt body in some cases and pointed body in some cases. Thank you so much.